Now we're looking at something which is very important, and that is pronating. Pronating is when the feet, the ankles of the feet, are falling into the middle. And you have that in your normal life. A lot of us are pronating, uh, and you don't see it so much because you're on a flat surface. But when you are a re on a rebounder, the rebounder is like a magnifying glass. It really shows you if you're pronating. And it's important to stop the pronating. If, even if you're never ever in your life on a rebounder, you want to stop pronating because it is very unhealthy for the knees and for the ankles. And in, in general for the overall structure of the body. And I will show you why. So here in the rebounder, with the, the deepest point is in the middle. And that's why I can say it works like a magnifying glass, because if, if you are pronating, then here you really see it, because you will see that your ankles are falling in. And have a look here, if you can see it, what my knees are doing. At the moment they are nicely looking forward, I stand correctly, and now I'm going to pronate. And can you see the knees are turning inwards? And not only the knees are turning inwards, but also my hips are turning inwards and I'm leaning slightly forward. So my whole structural alignment is out of place. So what we want to do in order to stop pronating is to give more of a weight on the outside of the heel. So instead of leaning inward, we're putting a little bit more of our weight on the outside and that can be just a millimeter. And you will see when I show you the, uh, the, the close-up how that looks like. Yeah, so that is very important. Some of us are supinating, that is the opposite, that's when you are turning the feet outside. But usually you don't have that problem so much on the rebounder because the tendency is more to go inside to the deepest point of the mat. So that's the thing to look at and uh, I will show you that in detail. To make it easier to understand the pronation issue, I have a skeleton of a foot here. I show it to you. Voila, here. Here you see the heel bone. And here, that is where the calf is coming into the foot. Now, what you've seen already before, what I said before, is that the heel bone needs to be in a 90 degree angle to the floor. Yeah, here we have the floor and it needs to be in a 90 degree angle to the floor. What happens if the heel bone is not in a 90 degree angle, like for instance like that here? Then the weight which comes here through this bone into the heel, it's not coming through here completely in the heel, but now it comes in this part of the body where we don't have a bony structure, but we only have tendons and the muscles, so that is soft tissue. And when the weight is coming down, the whole structure here collapses. And I show it to you from the side. Normally the weight comes through here and then in the heel bone. That is really stable, nothing is collapsing. However, now we are like falling in the middle. The heel bone is not in a 90 degree angle to the floor. That's what we call pronating. And now when I press down here, the whole structure here is collapsing and the arch is falling down. And after a while of bad usage like that, the body tries to find a solution to get more stability here. And what happens very often is that then here, a bunion is, is built. So here, see, I show it from here. When that comes down here, see, then the body tries to get a triangle position again and get more stability and builds a bony structure here which is called bunion. So again what we want to do is to keep the heel in a 90 degree angle and as often that means that we just have to put a little bit more weight on the outside of the foot and with that we achieve the non-pronation. Okay? Okay. This picture shows the three points which are in contact with the mat. So when you're standing on the rebounder, these are the three points where most of your weight is going through. 50% is going through the heel bone, 
25% between the little toe and the second toe and 25% between the big toe and the second toe from the from the inside. So this is 25, 25, 50. This is exactly where the weight of your body is going through when you are on the rebounder. And it is important that when your foot is on the mat that all these three points are really in contact with the mat. You don't want to stay back so much, lean back so much that only the heel is on the mat and the, the area beneath your toes is in the air. You also don't want to lean so much forward that only the two points on the forefoot are on the on the mat and your heel is in the air. So these three points always need to be in contact with the mat when you are on the mat. And of course you know when you are leaving the mat they are leaving too so the first thing which will leave is the heel and then on the down bounce the first thing which hits the mat are the toes and these two points on the toes and then the heel is coming. Now let's try that on the rebounder. <laughs> 